Hello and welcome to lesson number 5 of the Cody House course on mastering CSS animations. In today's video we're going to be creating this playful button animation in CSS. As usual, to follow along you can either use the CodePen template or download the lesson template on GitHub and in both cases you'll find the links in the video description. Ok, so let's get started. I'm using uh, the uh, template from uh, GitHub and we're going to be working in uh, the index.html file where we have the structure of the buttons and uh, the style.scss file where we have the style of uh, the styles of all the buttons. So we're doing uh, um, this uh, second button here. So let me comment out all the other buttons so that we can focus better on this one. Okay, now let's switch to the uh, CSS. Okay, so we already have some style in place, some very basic style, and we're using the before pseudo element to create this border bottom here. So first of all, we want to focus on this filling effect uh, of the border bottom. So we're gonna, we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna create an after pseudo element with the same style of the before pseudo element, then we are going to move the background color of the before pseudo element and we are going to change the background color for the after pseudo element. And we are going to use the same color of the text and paste. Now if we save, now we have the after pseudo element which sits right above the before pseudo element with a different color. So if for example we scale x, so on the x axis uh, by half this after pseudo element, you can see right below we have the before pseudo element and we want this transformation to happen not from the center, transform origin, but from the left, fr from here. So on the x-axis we're going to use, uh, sorry, we're going to use left and then center on the y-axis. So now the transformation is happening from this point here. We can scale all the way down to zero and now when we mouse over the button we can change the transform of the after pseudo element to 1. We also need to apply a transition on the transform property with a duration of zero, 0 0.3 seconds and save. Now if we check the preview we have this effect here but if we compare with the, the final result you see that in here we have the filling uh, uh, border bottom entering from the left and uh, exiting from uh, uh, going to the right. So we want to do something similar and to do so there is a trick we can change the transform origin of the after uh, pseudo element. Actually we can copy the transform origin and paste it in the hover event and then change it here to right center. Now if we check we have the same effect as in the final result. So what's happening here is that we're setting a transform origin during the hover uh, event let's say which is in here in the left center so it's in this point right here. So the scale x goes from 0 to 1 but when we move the mouse away from the button the transform origin is no longer this point here. Now it's in the right center, so in here. So the scale uh, x goes from 1, completely filled, to 0. And that's how we get this nice looking effect. So we can move forward. So now we want to animate the letters. And as you can see we have each letter animating uh, individually. So. Uh, we go back, we can go back to the structure, we have to change the structure. We need a wrapper and then we need uh, an additional wrapper inside which we're going to place each letter in its own uh, wrapper. Okay, so that's a lot of wrapper. So, and we need another one for L and then we need another one for A and then a final one for the uh, Y. So play. 
Now, let's check again the final result. As you can see, each letter is replaced by a clone which is coming from, uh, uh, from below, from the bottom. So we have to duplicate uh, this uh, M element here. Now, make sure to add an area label which is equal to the uh, text of the, of the button, so play in this case. Because if a user is using a screen reader to access uh, the, your content, the screen reader is going to read just this word here, play, and it's going to skip this part here. While if you don't specify an error label, well, uh, the screen reader is going to read each letter individually. So it's going to go right P L A Y. Okay. Now that accessibility is uh, okay, let's switch back to the style. Okay, so we want to target the M element and actually we want to target the oops, we want to target the last child. So basically we want to, we want to target this element here. And we want to set the position absolute and save. And then we want top of zero, left of zero, and then save. Now we want to add the position relative to this wrapper here, the span element. Let's set a position of relative. And now to remove the extra space, we can add a display of inline inline block and save. Now we have the uh, two words, one on top of each other. Uh, now we want to target the direct children of the last uh, M element, so these uh, uh, I elements here. And we want to set the transform translate Y of 100% and save. Now nothing is happening, well that's because we have to target all of the um, direct children of the M uh, elements, so all these uh, I elements, and we need to set this play of inline block, otherwise the transformation is not going to work. And now we have the transformation. Now if we check the height, so we're going to set a background color of gray just because we want to see the height of the span element. We want to increase this height a little, so we're going to apply padding vertical padding of 0.25m and then a horizontal padding of 0 to each letter. So when you save, you'll see that the, um, we have some extra space, some vertical extra space for the span element. Now we can remove this color here. Okay, on hover, we want to target all of the uh, direct children, all the letters of the last child. So this element here, all the letters, and we want to transform, apply translate y of 0. While the first child, for this element here, we want all the letters to have a trans translate Y of minus 100% and save. Now, if we go back to all of the letters, we can apply a transition of uh, on the transform property of 0.3 seconds and save. Now, let's see what's happening here. When we mouse over the button, we have the first uh, word moving up and uh, it's being replaced by the second word. So now we can target the span element and we know we could use overflow hidden here, but we have seen in the previous video that the overflow hidden is causing some issues with uh, uh, Safari. So we're going to use clip path instead and set an inset value of zero and save. Okay, so as you can see, the animation is uh, almost there. Let's check again the final result where we have that each letter is animating with a different timing. So we want to do something similar here. So what we can do on the hover target, we can, um, we can target 
in for both the words the second child okay so we do so by targeting the first uh, children and then we want the n child too we can set a transition delay of 0.1 second okay so when you do so and save now if we check again you you can see that the l is actually moving after the other letters so we can do the same for all of the uh, other letters for the third one we can set a actually let's make this uh, slightly quicker so 0 0.05 0 0.1 for the third one and then 0.15 for the fourth one okay and save and now if we check the result we have this nice looking animation now if you notice uh, some kind of um, little vibration on the letters you can fix that by setting on these elements here the will change property equal to transform now will change tells the browser look we are going to animate this thing so increase the performance for this animation now you should not use the will change for everything because it's going to affect a lot the performance of the browser but in some cases it can fix uh, uh, some bugs with the transformations in particular and now if you check the transformation is very smooth okay now obviously if you have more letters you should add more of these and then uh, nth child 5, 6 and so on and increase the transition delay to account for more letters. Okay, so here is the final result. Uh, that's all for this video and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.